This is the Chapter 13, Carbohydrate Metabolism, Continued um, Commentary. Last we left off, we summarized the chemiosmotic hypothesis with the electron transport chain and the um, ATP synthase, aka F1 ATPase, um, which takes, um, which is powered by the passage of um, hydrogen ions through the um, ATP synthase, aka the F1 ATPase, which powers the um, oxidative phosphorylation of ADP back to ATP. So, I'm not going to go ahead and re um, review that in detail, I'm just going to point you to the YouTube animation, which shows you the nice uh, animation of this whole process. All you have to do is just type in electron transport chain animation overview, which I thought was really nice, into YouTube, and it gives you this right here. Here you see the overall summary, and then it actually gives you the animation, showing you the electron transport chain, um, the incoming NADHs, donating their electrons and hydrogens, powering these proton pump metalloproteins, pumping in hydrogens, um, and then you see the eventual passage of the hydrogen ions back through the ATP synthase, um, oxidative phosphorylizing the ADP to ATPs. So uh, I recommend going through those if you're still hammering out this whole chemiosmotic um, hypothesis steps. Alright, let's go to our PowerPoint. Now, here is a dilemma. Let me go back to this particular slide that I've added in. The minute you sit there and you have fresh new ATP, this is nice, but it really needs to get to the cytoplasm where it can um, continue to power up various other um, chemical pathways. So, how does it sit there and go from the inside of the mitochondria to the outside? More importantly, how does ADP go from the inside to the, or I'm sorry, go from the outside to the inside? Because keep in mind, in this intermembrane space, we have all of these hydrogen ions which are trapped in between. Well it turns out we have what we call um, channels and the channels are basically um, doorways which allow the passage of key um, biomolecules. So they allow passage of some biomolecules but not others. So let's jump ahead. There are two passages we're going to focus on. There's a ton more, but this is just an introduction. Um, the first one is A and T. The full name, which you have to know both, so memorize everything. Um, the full name is Adenosine Nucleotide Translocator. S summarized as A and T. The next name is VDAC with the full name voltage dependent anion translocator or voltage dependent anion channel which is located here so the a and t is located on uh, the um, inner membrane and it allows passage of certain biomolecules through the membrane to the inner membrane space the VDAC is found on the outer membrane allowing the certain molecules to pass from the inner membrane space to the outer. Basically what these do, um, they have different uh, different um, stimuli inactivating them, but they allow the passage of ATP and ADP. The ANT works like this. Um, it requires one ADP to pass through, and as it passes through, it then swaps a ATP. It's, this is based on negative charges. Keep in mind, phosphates 
have natural negative charges to them. So ATP, for example, the adenosine is going to have three phosphates. And each one of these is going to have um, excess negative charges. So keep that in mind. ADP is the same way it has negative charges. So it allows a passage of one ATP, which is negatively charged, um, at the same time allowing passage of an ADP. For the VDAC, this is voltage dependent. Um, it doesn't require swapping as long as it's a negative charge. So it allows the passage of ADP and ATP to pass through at will. doesn't need to be swapped. However, they do need to be negatively charged uh, molecules to pass through. Why is this important? Why am I emphasizing the negative charged molecules of ADP and ADP? Because they only allow negative charges and not positive charges. Any type of positive charge ions, they're actually blocked. So this is important because it helps maintain the high concentration of positive charged hydrogen ions while allowing the passage of the negative charged ATP and ADP. You're responsible for knowing both of these. Let's move on. Um, now, with the chemiosmotic process, the oxidative phosphorylation via the electron transport, um, this shows the relationship of how many ATP are produced from a, C, from a single acetyl-CoA molecule. So keep in mind, we're going to break down this two-carbon carbonyl group right here, this is acetyl portion. And how much energy is released? Um, 10 ADP. So you're responsible for knowing this. You're also responsible for knowing these rough relationships. For every one GTP, you have one ADP produced. For every one FADH2, 1.5 ATP is produced. For every three NADH, 7.5 ATP are produced. So these are um, good general relationships that you should put on your upcoming um, f final cheat sheet. Let's go ahead and, and go forward. Um, if you were to have one single glucose molecule, this is going to produce a net amount of 32 ATP. It actually produces more ATP, but keep in mind some of the ATP had to um, charge the molecule for it to uh, be broken down, or to prime the molecule for it to be broken down. So this is net 32.